All right, so welcome into our live stream today. We're going to be talk going to be talking about the rising stars in the blockchain gaming area, and I think you guys are going to like this because there's a lot of new games and also some rising stars within there that I think are one ready for potential investment, maybe as a potential opportunity. And we're going to dive into that a little deeper. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. As we get into this, the first thing I will say is these types of of really reviews that we do on a lot of uh, games, especially in our top 10, um, it's done under what we call a market mover. Market movers are very simple. We'll do our own research, pull together our own data sets, and then provide some potential opportunity for you guys in terms of a really more of a, a research project for you to go and take a look at these projects. Not investment advice for you guys, but definitely we're not doing any price targets today, just, just to let you know, but we are pointing out some elements within each one of these games that could drive them into some very special places. All right, let's just go into the ranking. I want to get over and open this one up for a second because this is pretty cool on uh, our top 10 here. What we did was we looked at, uh, this is subjective in a list that is and was compiled by our research team. Then we went in and ranked this by sentiment, these are rising stars. So there's a lot of games in here that you guys might say, oh, well, Paul, this game should be on there. If it's a game that has a little bit of maturity and has been around for a little bit, then it's mo most likely not going to make this list. Then we took a look at the overall sentiment of the communities that were out there, and then we measured the size of the communities. Now, we do this through a thing we call the Crypto Power Index. The Crypto Power Index is pretty basic. Uh, we've been building it for many years, and Essentially, what it does is it looks at a couple of things. One, it looks at sentiment based on overall uh, engagement across a variety of APIs that come in from social platforms. Secondly, secondly it's going to look at amplification, how people are amplifying something. Think of it as the water cooler effect. Many people call it Metcalf's Law, the node effect. That is exactly what we're doing with the Crypto Power Index. Then we give it a rating, and in many cases, we can lay an indice over a chart to give you a price trajectory on how some of these projects will do. And we'll do a lot of that in our diamond circle. Our diamond circle is where, and we're trying to pick up our speed on diamond circle for all you diamond circle members, be ready, because we're getting ready to start unleashing a lot of these drops on projects on a daily basis that will come out. And uh, the way we deliver those is via the email. So when you sign up for diamond circle, that's how it works. Let's get into the list here and take a look here, because I want to kind of run these down. And this is uh, the ranking based on sentiment. Uh, number one, of course, was Bomb Crypto uh, at an 80.27. That's a pretty high score on sentiment under the conditions of the market as they are right now. Remember, gaming, I feel, though the tokens will sometimes uh, tell you a different story, but in general, the gaming sentiment seems to be holding and somewhat uh, resistant to what we're seeing in traditional crypto markets. And we're studying this really as a unique anomaly that I think we need to really put a lot of time in because there is something happening in gaming crypto that I myself, being a data analyst and a researcher for two decades, I can't even put my finger on it because I'm trying to figure out how and why some of these projects are continuing to hold these kind of sentiment numbers. So anyway, Thetan Arena, another big project right here, 7915. And I say big projects, the rising star, but it is one that has a pretty sizable audience and um, membership and group. Uh, but Thetan Arena come in, coming in at number two at 79.15. And then Soul Chicks, the one that just basically launched this week. Uh, remember, this is one I think that people are kind of referring to as the, as the project that kind of caused uh, Solana a little bit of problem. I will say something with Soul Chicks. Uh, you got to be on the lookout for all of these kind of games. One of the, I think one of the founders had been involved in... Uh, a questionable situation. So do your own research, dive into these, always look at the team, always look at kind of the history of what's happening in any of these projects and see if it works for you. Walking Dead, this is a project that's not even released yet. They don't have any on Twitter, but Gala Games, of course, has um, made a huge uh, to-do about this at Galaverse, and it already has, mainly because of its notoriety and awareness, a big following on social. It's holding in at 7711. And then Place Wars. We've had Place Wars here on our show. That is a rising star game for sure. I like what Myrtle is doing and what they are trying to do overall, still holding strong. And again, another rabid community. Place Wars, watch out for them, 7599. 
Spider Tanks, another Gala game that's hitting the ranks here at 75.26. And right behind it is Miranda's, another Gala game. Uh, and people are looking at Gala and just going, why is this project just not absolutely unhooking? That's a very interesting scenario. We probably should take it and talk about that for a second. Gala has had a major correction during this period of time where we've seen this fall off in Bitcoin. And at the same time, they've been doing things like Galaverse. I wonder if that was a little bit priced in. We did have Bitbender on the show, but I wonder if that was a little priced in before because we haven't continued to see Gala correct. If that thing gets anywhere near the low 40 cents, I think that becomes a major buy on where Gala is going because there's a lot of games that they're releasing and the likelihood of them doing even more innovation in the blockchain space. Remember, this is Zynga. You know, former Zynga executives, lots of, of AAA talent. There's a lot happening there, and I think we're going to see some cool things coming. So Miranda's holding in right there at um, 74.85. Uh, Zuki Moba comes in at 73.14. We've talked about them before, uh, but 73.14, another uh, kind of an unknown game but or unknown project, but is definitely starting to get some traction. Uh, Cryo War comes in at 72.58, and then the last on the list of the top 10 is Battle Hero. This, again, is based on our December sentiment rankings. Now, why is sentiment important? And many people look at this, well, hey, Paul, just follow the charts, you know, follow the news, follow these things. Sentiment is the biggest thing that I think directs social and crypto all in unison. These two elements are lockstep of how the crypto society of people who are investing in crypto, putting money into blockchain development, and why social media has somehow just become the place, the water cooler of where a lot of these programs are, one, brought to life, two, spread around the internet and people find out about them, and best of all, it's where people are creating these communities to talk to each other, share ideas and concepts around investing in something, and that's a big deal. The big advantage, though, that you have to put on top of that already is that this is a gaming sector. And gaming sectors are driven off of two things, pop culture and the gaming community. And that's been the, the way it has been in AAA gaming for over a decade, maybe two decades, if you look back in some of the, the early gaming era before we really saw the take up of esports and what's happening there. Culture and community. Those two things right there will drive it. And because social is so tied to both, and then you layer in the financial side of this, that's why sentiment matters a lot. Let's also go over here and take a look at the size of these active communities. This is the December numbers. And what we did was we just ranked the same exact group and rerouted them into by size of community. Thetan Arena comes in at number one at 429,000. Soul Chicks, Ironically, this is a very unusual move on Solchix because they're 371,000. They're the number two slot right now, and they're a brand new, even though it's a brand new release and an ongoing project that has been talked about for quite some time, for them to be able to grow to that level of community size is pretty, um, that's pretty impressive. I just, I'm not, that one is a little bit, like I said, some of these I'm really questioning as to how they got there and is that community. The key here is sentiment is something you can't fake out. If sentiment is strong in a community, it does mean the community is active. We use sentiment based on a weighted scale, so it doesn't matter if you have 100,000 in your community or, or 1 million, you're still a weighted scale. So a 1 million doesn't get a 95, and 100 doesn't get a you know an 85. It's a weighted scale based on the quality of the sentiment that people are talking about your project. Number three, Bomb Crypto, a top three holding in at 368, 121. Uh, and then Battle Hero, which was the lower uh, last place, at least in this list, for overall sentiment, but right there in the middle at uh, 319, or excuse me, 321,000. Then Place Wars coming in at 319,000. I like this, again, I like this project because it's, it's a small project uh, and Asian base. Very, very interesting on where this could grow. And I think what we'll see in the Pacific Rim in terms of growth, because that is a gaming mecca. Place Wars could surprise us soon. Walking Dead Empires, 306,000. Again, this is, I think, all because of the franchise. Then you roll into Cryo War at 251,000. ZK, or excuse me, not ZK, but Zuki Moba, uh, 235,000. Spider Tanks, very young 
uh, still not completely out there. And I think Spider Tanks and Mirandas both do not have Twitter accounts. So we had to really create a different kind of credential to track that data down, 102,000 and 93,000 respectively. So that's cool. I like the fact that this help, helps you. Hopefully this will help you guys get your head around what projects are out there that are coming, which ones are rising, which one has a lot of potential to really roll out and become something special. I think Theta and Arena, if you look at where sentiment is holding, my picks on this would still be Theta and Arena and Bomb Crypto. I would still stay with Bomb Crypto. Soul Chick's still very new to uh, be able to put enough behind it. I don't know that I would I would go that direction just yet. And then I still like Place Wars. Place Wars is one of my picks and it's been in my uh, gaming portfolio for quite some time and I would continue to still go in that direction. Out of the lower ones, um, I don't know that I would go with Zuki or Cryo War uh, based on just my research and the fact that their sentiment is a little bit lower. However, their communities are respectable. And when you have a community, that can start to move a project in the positive you know, model. And especially if you're gameplay, many of these, remember, there's only a handful of these in alpha. Many of them are, are uh, just a handful in beta. Many of them are in alpha or not even released yet. So keep all of that in mind. I wanted to show you guys some gameplay footage here as we get into some of this. And Theta, and I want to just go to that one quickly because it is trading right now at 960 Seven, if you go back here to the year, you can kind of see the run-up that Theta has had, Theta and Arena has had, no no uh, pun for Theta, uh, has had over the years. So not a bad one, and I still think this one is, is one that we're going to continue to to see. And you can kind of see right here, uh, let me zoom in on that a little bit, on their Twitter, very active, 275,000 just on the Twitter side of things. Then you jump over to Soul Chicks. Of course, this token just, just got listed. You can kind of see where they are. We'll go to the seven day because this is the thing that we got the big pop. It has moved on down into a typical correction. And this is the early state of a lot of these games. Don't let this red scare you away on early games. Remember, on a lot of these projects, it doesn't matter if it's a game or if it's a DeFi project, when it starts, first started to get gets released, Bots are usually the ones, those are the, the areas where you don't want to invest unless you're in the pre-IDO, and that's typically where you're selling your tokens. Um, but you want to be able to grab it on the back side of that and watch it run. And let me give you an example of one of these, and I think um, this will help you understand it. Let's go to D-Race. We'll take a look here at D-Race. Go to the all-time, or let's go to the all, yeah. So you can kind of see it gets that little bump over here. And then this one had that little period of time where it was the perfect opportunity to buy it. And then boom, D-Ray started taking off. Probably not as an easy one to take and compare to, but that's a good example of how you got to watch these as we go. Uh, but Soul Chick still 275,000 on Twitter, zooming in on that one. Uh, again, moved up the ranks very quickly in growing. Uh, Mirandas, if you've not seen this one, this is a Gala Games project that I think is one that you guys should take a look at. Uh, it's very early on this one, uh, but it's one that I, I definitely have on the lock. Uh, Gala has been so vocal about what they've done with Gala Verse, and they had so much happening in terms of release and just some of the projects and things that they were dropping there. Obviously, this deal uh, right here, I want to go over to one of the things that I thought was cool, and that was just this whole element around what they did at Galaverse. I mean, this was an absolute huge, and there was the Walking Dead promo you right there you see with Adam Levine. Um, and I think this is the key. When you, we're moving into an era with blockchain gaming that eSports entered about a decade ago. And I think we are just maybe a fraction of a time away from it really taking off. Very early, yes, true. You are watching this show. You, you guys understand how early you are in a lot of these projects. So good stuff. I want to jump to some uh, gameplay here. Town Stars, just to give you an idea of what Town Stars has been doing. Uh, and you can kind of see they're, they're really, this is one of the, uh, one of the more mature projects out of Gala. And it's one that I think as you, you continuously see different kinds of gameplay footage, this one is very mature in the sense of how they've built the app or the gaming app itself. So a good one. Spider Tanks, this is one of my favorite. This is one I want to play. I have not had a chance to play this one, but I like these top-down games like this and anything that has guns in it, as my guys say. 
If it's got guns, it wins for me. I like it. And then let's take a look at this one right here on Soul Chicks. You can kind of see what their whole theming was. Let me jump along here into before their promo and get into a little bit of their, their there we go, into their ecosystem and environment. You can kind of see how they're doing their top down. And they've got this whole aspect. Again, great graphics. Uh, this one, I think, has a potential to do some pretty cool things, you know, as it starts to correct and we start to see the project kind of mature and go forward. Let's take a look at Cryo War. This one has got just unbelievable, uh, again, Unreal Engine right there, but I think really just great look and great graphics on how they're trying to create uh, these kinds of uh, blockchain elements. And then let's take a look at Place War. You've probably seen us talk about this. We had uh, Myrtle on the show. And really, it's a tank game. And it has a lot of uh, elements in it. It's also got land that's coming out, which is a, a project called uh, Placidonia, I think. Uh, that's going to be interesting to watch. And then Zuki Moba, again. A lot of these games have a lot of similar looks. So I think the ones that really break out and get very well done in terms of both graphics and also execution on their software and the development team, these, those are the ones I think could really kind of break out into uh, top top games. So as we get going, here's the, uh, this is the Thetan. Let me jump into that one as well. And I want to get over to questions because I know you guys have a lot. This one I love because I feel like the dynamic play here is, such more, is so much more active. And if you're a gamer, you probably get into that kind of look. That's why I think Thetan has such a massive audience and a massive... Uh, following here, and if you look at what Phaeton is doing, just to kind of reiterate right here on their numbers, Phaeton holding it at a 79.15, and then right there is the big story, I think, at 429. I mean, they're almost at a half a million right now, and this is just getting started. If they can get into the range of a million um, members in their ecosystem, imagine what the conversion rate would be to players. And then you're getting going to get into all these play-to-earn angles and aspects of many of these projects. And at that point, you get to critical mass, you start to see societal shift. Societal shift happened in AAA gaming and esports where that became careers for a lot of young people that were coming out of college or even high school that really liked gaming and were into it. And there was never really a vertical for that to go. Now, this could be that era of what we saw a decade ago in esports. So a lot happening right now in this space. The top stars right there, just uh, before we jump out, that's the last look in case you guys want to take a screenshot. We'll continue to do this uh, rising star segment. We're going to try to do something like this weekly, and mainly because the number of games that are coming onto the market, how crypto is being affected by it, and then also the resilience capacity of some of these projects and some of these studios that we really need to pay attention to because they could be a shining star in a bear market as we approach one, whether it's next year or in some cases, some people saying even 2023. I don't necessarily believe that. I think we're probably going to see the bear market towards the end of next year. But I think blockchain gaming is definitely going to go. Let's get over to the questions for today just to kind of understand what you guys are doing. Uh, Super Chat coming in from Unlimited NFT. Uh, thanks a lot for the super chat. We appreciate it. And then Epic Guitar. I like that one. Thanks so much, my man. Soul Chicks sent representative to uh, gaming guilds. Oh, that's cool. I like, uh, again, that's, that's a, an element I think you guys, you guys are doing your homework. And that's the key on any of these early stage gaming and blockchain projects is understanding the, one, the team, what they're trying to do, if the gameplay is there and they're willing to share a lot of that. In most cases, you can really get into it then start following the ecosystem of the members in the community because that, I think, is just as important in how a lot of this is going. A lot of people just kind of talking about uh, where this is going. Uh, Bobby Coons, is Matt getting its feet wet uh, with gaming? Yes, absolutely, Bobby. The We had the Matic, the Polygon, lead on for their gaming and NFT side, and it was a great interview. You should check the, the video out. We'll, we'll try to put one in the link uh, below, so if you guys come back to this after the live, uh, you can jump to one of our videos on that or just search Polygon um, Gaming and NFT in, in our channel when you do this channel search 
uh, you can do that right there and, and you'll be able to find it. Uh, Sean Colte, uh, Alien Worlds, definitely, uh, again, a little bit more of a mature game. It's, it's why we didn't put it in the list, Sean. Uh, but I do like Alien Worlds. It's definitely one that's we've talked about it many times here on the show, for sure. Um, and then what are your views on Cypher, and is it a long-term potential? That's a good one, Lee. Cypher is a project that we just started putting into our crosshairs a couple of weeks ago. It's one that we probably should take a little bit deeper look at, and I like it. If you guys know something or know a lead at Cypher, we'd love to have them come on the show. We do get quite a few of the project games. I mean, obviously, you probably saw our Star Atlas. You've seen our Gala Games interviews. Uh, check out Bitbender on his uh, insights on Galaverse, what they were doing and what they were trying to do long term. Um, but I think a lot of that is going to be very cool uh, in terms of, especially these gaming houses, when they get more public about what's happening. It's very important that they get there. Uh, Strictly Sports, uh, Paul, do you think um, AAA Studios, Ubisoft, EA, getting into play to earn will hurt a lot of these similar blockchain games coming out? That's a good question. And this is one that has been asked many times. Does the blockchain play to earn? Is it a limited cycle for some of these young games? I think we're going to see massive roll up in the industry, just like we saw in the early days of the internet. We saw massive roll up in acquisition mergers, et cetera, you're going to see studios like Gala and many others that are going to flow into acquisition of games and developers, what they call aqua hires, because the developers are probably the most important asset of a gaming community. Now, at the same time, I would argue the opposite of that for AAA gaming houses, because AAA gaming houses are coming from Web 2.0. Not that that's a bad thing, but it is a ramp that they have to take to be able to move into Web3 and blockchain. And to go there, you're going to have to uh, learn a whole new code set in most cases, even though we do see some Unreal Engine applications being ported and moved into this kind of model. The reality though, for the play to earn functionality, because that's gonna be a component that will be blockchain driven, that's gonna be a big factor I think that uh, even AAA will have to do talent acquisition to get there. Now, what does that mean? Maybe they buy a bunch of these upstarts that start to get communities. But the biggest thing that will separate all of these projects, and it's what we track most, sentiment and community size and also how, how rabid that community is. So don't underestimate a community of 250,000 people that are super committed to that project. So lots to go there. Hopefully that answers your question. If you had to choose five projects for the largest possible game in one to three years, what would they be? Oleg. Uh, now, I'm assuming you mean gaming projects. Um, I don't know that I would... I'd have to spend some time on that one, but I'll give you a couple. I definitely think Gala is going gonna, is gonna to hold. I don't feel like that project is going anywhere. You've got to get in Sandbox. That's a metaverse play, but gaming applications will get into this. As far as pure game, I still... I'm, I'm optimistic, but yet I need to see it happen, and that's Star Atlas. It's still probably another, maybe a year, really, from seeing a release. But Star Atlas could go there. The likelihood is that token may have its ups and downs. But if you're in long term, then like investing in a Ubisoft or investing in Microsoft in the early days before Xbox, all those kind of things can play into this. So I would stay with the big guys and then look for special rising stars to jump into. Like a Thetan Arena, I like what they're doing. Um, obviously, um, Place Wars might be another one that I would take a look at. But you want to remember that you got you to gotta take a little bit of risk, or at least I know I do, take a little bit of risk on some of these that have the potential to 100x. That's the ones you want to be in for 18 months, 24, 36 on the next cycle and then you're there at that time, that is when life-changing things happen for you. If you were in crypto in 2017, 2018, your game is different than everybody else that's just owning crypto now for sure. All right, uh, God's Unchanged isn't in the metrics. Just so you know, and I want to re repeat this, is that it's not that they weren't in our metrics. It's just we had a data set of groups of games that our team put together, and then we ranked that group. So it's kind of like a heat if you think of it. Next week, we'll have a different heat. We'll make sure God's Unchained is in that heat. 
And then maybe we could do a little runoff on this uh, and do an, on these rising stars and come up with kind of like a cool thing. Well, let me think about that because I think we could come up with something that, that would help us understand because it's all about communities out there that's driving this. Uh, Chris uh, Rios, uh, thoughts on Sin City? Another one I like. Mafia Metaverse game ranked number three, all-time uh, Binance NFT, very unique concept. Would agree with you on that. Sin City is another one. I like the Binance smart chain ecosystem for gaming. It, I think, is where we're going to see a lot of innovation in uh, blockchain gaming for sure. All right, here we go. Another super chat. Uh, check Far Farsight currently in Dapp Radar's weekly top. I don't know if you guys have used Dapp Radar, but there's a couple of those. Uh, Play to Earn uh, Dapp Radar, some of those that you can kind of look at the rankings on. Some of them will score social, not score, but give you social. They only pull typical like 24 hour active. What we do is we look at the whole ecosystem, usually for a 30 or a 60 day range in our data sets. So we probably need to do something like that um, to start ranking. Maybe that'd be kind of fun for Rising Star page on Diamond Circle or something like that. Anyway, if you guys would like more of this, more of these Rising Star game uh, segments or other Rising Star project segments, because you could go DeFi, we do this in altcoins right now with our top 20. I'd love to hear your feedbacks on that because it seems like people want to look at how these projects compare up against others. Because in many cases, you can't invest in everything. So you kind of have to isolate in on the projects, one, that, you, that are trending, two, have proof of um, kind of their stake in the sense of why they're in the business and where they're going. And then three, I think you got to get into the team and the ecosystem in terms of uh, just overall people that are really following that project. So. Stay tuned right here. If you guys want more of that, if you have an idea for a show, drop it in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter. It's at Paul Barron. I'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.